Right now, the Ukrainian people are fighting back, standing strong, trying to defend their nation and send a message to Russian President Vladimir Putin that they will not be taken down easily. Joining us right now from Kyiv is Ukrainian Parliament member Alexei Goncharenko. Thanks for joining us this morning. First, can you tell us what's happening Hello. right now and, and how are you holding up and how's your family? Right now, there are fightings all over the country. But the enemy tries to get to the capital city, but uh, couldn't. Our army really stand firm, and uh, they couldn't just enter the city. Uh, there are bombings. Uh, humanitarian situation is very difficult, very bad. And they are bombing kindergartens, hospitals, schools, uh, universities, maternity houses. So it's absolutely genocide in the 21st century in the middle of Europe. That's the situation. But we're standing strong. Uh, just minutes ago, there was uh, a meeting of Ukrainian parliament, and uh, we made new, some new laws, which are important for our army and for the society at that moment. So we believe that we will win. And uh, really, we are fighting for our home and for the, for all, the whole free world. How far away are they from where you are located right now? Do you know? Uh, I think 25, 30 kilometers. And what are you doing at this moment? I, th this must be, I, I can't imagine what this is like for, for you. This is so surreal for, to see civilians taking on Putin's army. I know many Ukrainians feel like this is their duty to protect their family, even if, if this means giving the ultimate sacrifice. And I understand you guys have stocked up on weapons as well. Yes, uh, I am also joined uh, civic guard, uh, civilian militia. Uh, with the weapons in my hands, I'm ready to fight for Kiev if it will be um, if it will be needed. For the moment, the situation in Kiev is calm, but everything can change. And uh, if occupant will enter the city, we will fight with occupants on the streets and we'll make hell here for them. Wow. And, you know, you said 25 kilometers. You believe they're about 25 kilometers away, which is about 21 miles. I'm, as I'm talking to you, I can't. You're so you, your demeanor is so calm right now. What what are you? What, what are you feeling at this moment? Uh, you know, there was at the beginning, the first days, there were a lot of concerns, sorry. Certainly that's true. But now it's like, you know, decisive mood. So I understand that we need to fight and I'm sure that we will win. The moral of people is very high. People in the cities where occupants entered the cities, Kharkiv, Sumy, Chernigov, they use uh, just uh, cocktails of Molotov against tanks. So it is all society which is fighting, not only army. And that's why I'm sure that we will win. It couldn't be any other way when the whole society is so united. We want to protect our home because we don't have any other home in any other land. So that is our uh, position. But also, we need to you need to understand that if Putin would be successful here, he will go further. He's not going to stop. It's a real aggressor. And uh, in reality, the Third World War already started. So we are now on the frontier, and we hope very much that our partners will help us to be to, to fight and to win. And there's so much bad information that we're hearing and that we're seeing right now, including the fact that Putin's trying to take out all forms of communication, which clearly is not working. Can you talk us through what you're hearing from other Ukrainians who are on the streets right now fighting? People are... People are ready because many people, especially women, children, elderly people, they left Kiev and other cities which are uh, in fighting or close to fighting. Many people are in the western part of Ukraine, which is calm now. So on near one million refugees across the border. So th that's the situation. But tens and tens of thousands of Ukrainians took weapons in their arms. Uh, doctors, uh, teachers, IT specialists, uh, I don't know, managers, just civil civilians, just ordinary civilians. But we feel that we need to do this uh, because we need to stop to stop the enemy. And what they are doing with these old bombings of residential areas of uh, using vacuum bombs, which is second power, most powerful weapon after nuclear, they already use it against us. In Kharkiv, for example, that's the second biggest city in Ukraine, 1.5 million people. Uh, that's something which makes us especially angry. And we understand that we are fighting not only just for independence, but for our lives. Yeah, and, you, and you just mentioned that you hope a lot of the Western nations can impose stricter sanctions against uh, Vladimir Putin. What do you make yes. of 
What do you make of the Biden administration's response to this invasion so far? What else could have been done to stop Putin? There are some strong steps, and we are thankful for them, and we appreciate them, and there is a military help uh, to Ukraine, but uh, more can be and should be done. I, I would uh, emphasize two points. First is ban on Russian oil and gas, because today it's full of Ukrainian blood. It's bloody oil and bloody gas, and ban on Russian energy will stop Putin, because two-thirds of Russian export is oil and gas, and that's nothing they have more. They are just a big gas station uh, of the world. And second thing is to help us to close the sky, the non-flight zone over Ukraine. If uh, American crew and pilots cannot be involved, uh, give us please weapons, give us patriots. We will do everything ourselves, like we are fighting for ourselves on our ground now. But we need weapons and patriots can help us a lot, a lot. So we desperately need it. So I address to you Americans, please ask your authorities, administration, congressmen, senators to help us just give us a possibility to fight and certainly pray for us. And you tweeted something that stood out to me uh, just yesterday. You tweeted, yesterday twins were born in Kharkiv, a boy and a girl. Today these babies are left orphans as their parents died under shelling. 2022 Europe. There are people who are ready to become a foster family for the little ones because we don't leave ours behind. What a powerful statement. What do you want Americans to know about the resilience of the Ukrainian people? The resilience is uh, very strong and uh, people will never surrender. And uh, that was the answer of our uh, bodyguards uh, on the Zmini Island when just several Russian ships, just imagine, against dozen uh, of our guards in the small, on the small island in Black Sea, just a cliff in the sea. And they said to them, surrender. And they said to them, never. They said it in other words, but I can't use them in your life. And, uh, but they said, never, we will never surrender. Uh, against several ships, and they started bombing them. So just for your understanding, what is the moral in the society? So it is really very, very high. But certainly we need humanitarian aid because many people are suffering now. Many people lost their homes. Many people lost their relatives. Many people are need to, to, to run to other places of the country. And we feel this support, but please help us because uh, it's something really, if other dictators in the world will see that Putin is successful, that will be the only beginning of a huge crisis. So that's so important now to show that the free world is strong, where the American leadership is strong enough to stop uh, such mad, mad people like uh, mad dictators like Putin is. I know you mentioned that the Ukrainian parliament uh, met this morning. Have you had recent contact with President Zelensky? And, and what does his leadership mean to you in a moment like this? Uh, I'm from opposition party. I'm not from party of Mr. Zelensky. But now everybody, we are all are united. And he's our chief commander. We don't have any other. And uh, his leadership is good. Uh, we are fighting. He's in Kiev. Nobody is running. We are ready to defend the city, the capital. Uh, you know, members of the parliament are ready to defend the building of parliament with weapons in their hands. It says something, yes. So, and uh, the same with president. So we are absolutely sure uh, that the country will not be decapitated. Uh, we have leadership, we have government, we know what to do, uh, and we will do this. And more and more people you now are coming to, uh, are standing uh, to go to army. So army, our army will go, will go only stronger from time and russians uh, have have very big losses uh, almost 10,000 people already killed their soldiers and officers including senior officers that's the biggest losses of russian army from the second world war just imagine in afghanistan for in 10 years war uh, soviet union lost 15,000 soldiers and officers now russia already just in one week uh, lost almost 10,000 just imagine wow all right, Alexei Goncharenko, wishing you the best, of, uh, the best of everything right now for you and your people and your family there. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.